Let somebody shout, Hallelujah. We give glory to that redemption from the choristers, and we pray that God will keep them to the end in Jesus' name. Amen. And we give glory to God that we are able to come here again in this program. And I want us to begin to appreciate the Almighty God for his protection, for keeping us, for preserving us. Despite all that has been happening, he has fulfilled his promise over us. We are hale and hearty. Let's begin to appreciate the Almighty God. Father, we bless your name once again that you have brought us into this program. We give you all the glory, honor, and adoration. Thank you for what you have been doing in our lives. Thank you for what you are about to do now. And thank you for that which we do in the nearest future. We give you praise, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Let's pray. Ancient of this, as old as you are, as old as you are, you will never change. Ancient of this, as old as you are, as old as you are, you will never change. Ancient of this, ancient of this, as old as you are, as old as you are, you will never change. Ancient of this, as old as you. As old as you are, you will never change. The ancient of days will worship you. The Holy One of Israel will appreciate you. The I am that is I am will adore you. Everything may change. You remain constant. We give you all the glory for being there for us at all times. We thank you for your divine protection, divine preservation, divine provision. May your name be praised forever in Jesus' name. Thank you for bringing us to this program yet again. Thank you for making it available for us. And thank you for your son and daddy you have been using for us and that gave all this privilege. In blessing, bless him in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep him in Jesus' name. Amen. Advance his ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. And let it continue to be well with him and the entire family in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, Holy Spirit, take over in Jesus' name. Amen. That which we cannot change, change it for us in Jesus' name. Amen. The thing that we cannot do for ourselves, Please do it for us in Jesus' name. Amen. And let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We want to give glory to God Almighty once again. And we thank our daddy, our father and the Lord especially for the privilege they are given to us to minister and also to be uh, watching under this telecast. God will continue to work with him in Jesus' name. Amen. Our topic today is a question and as well an answer. What is that but in your life? It shall roll away. What is that but in your life? It shall roll away. Amen. We are taking our test in 2 Kings chapter 4. We will read... 13 and 14. 2 Kings 4, 13 and 14. And he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? Would thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? As he answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gaius answered and said, Verily, she has no child, and her husband is old. 
What is that bought in your life? It shall roll away in Jesus' name. Amen. When I was younger, as a Christian, our elders then used to sing chorus that the God that hid the bot in the life of Jabez healed my bot. At that time, it was not something meaningful to me, but I know better now. I want to ask you to take a look at your life this evening. Is there anything or any situation that makes you feel incomplete, that makes you feel unfulfilled, or that makes you to be ridiculed among brethren? The portion we have just read as our text is talking about the story of the Shunammite woman. To those looking at her outside, life is very good to her. Things are looking really, really good and fine. But there is a dark spot which they could not see. And that's what we are talking about tonight. What is that dark spot in your life that people could not see? What is that dark spot in your life that makes you to look successful publicly, but privately you are a failure? The Lord will remove it today in Jesus' name. Amen. Everything that makes you a public success and a private failure shall be terminated in Jesus' name. Amen. What is the origin of that spot in our lives. When God created man in the Garden of Eden, everything, both the man and the world he created, was certified good. It was uncorruptible world. No corruption. But when sin came then into the Garden, what God has said is perfect became imperfect. And from that day, man began to experience different kinds of reproach, problems, challenges, and what I call both in our lives. Because Proverbs 14.34 says, Proverbs 14.34, Righteousness exalted a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. It is sin that brings reproach to our life. And every reproach shall be rolled away today in Jesus' name. We want to go and, uh, to two or three or four outlines to give meaning to what is bought, bought in our life or the negativity of our life. Number one, the thing that has rubbish all the good things Allah said about us is bought. In 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1, 2 Kings 5, 1, they told us a story of a, a general called Naaman. He was a great man. He was an honorable man. He had power and he was famous. And they concluded that he was even a mighty man of valor. But when they want to finalize, they said, but he was a leper. That is bought in his life. But he was a leper. Whatever he said before, that had been canceled. The but there has canceled all. All the Naman is have been rubbish by the single but in his life. Everything that have robbed the power of God in your life shall give way today in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two, the reproach in our life, the reproach in the life of a man, is also a bot in his life. In Luke chapter 1, 5 to 7, Luke 1, 5 to 7, we have the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth. God himself, confirm it that they were righteous 
They were serving God faithfully. It's not a question of whether they, they, they are outside God. They were indeed inside God, pure and holy. But there was but. But was that they were barren. They have no child. And that made people to ask questions about their God. Today, every reproach that made people to ask, where is your God? God will remove it in Jesus' name. Number three, the situation that brings tears to our eyes that what cannot express are the dark spot of life. In the story of First Samuel chapter, I mean Anna in First Samuel chapter 1, 5 to 10. First Samuel chapter 1, 5 to 10. Anna could not even express herself to Eli the priest what he was, she was passing through. She was only shedding tears, asking God for help. Despite the love that the husband showered on her, caring for her, giving her double portion against others, yet the birth in her life caused her sorrow, caused her tears. Everything that making you to share secret tears today shall attract the attention of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Number four, the challenge that refused to go, I haven't done all. You can find that in Mark 5, 25 to 34. Mark 5, 25 to 34. We are told of the story of the woman of issue of blood. For 12 years, she had been suffering. She did all humanly possible to be done, but there was no solution. Everything in your life that defies solution, despite all your efforts, we surrender to the power of God today in Jesus' name. Amen. The thing that only God can take away, that no man can take away from your life except God help or intervene, could also be termed as that spot or birth in our life. In 2 Kings chapter 4, 13 to 16, 2 Kings 4, 13 to 16, the Shunammite woman that we told you the story from our text, she was well connected, she was wealthy, she had everything going in for her, but she has a problem that only God can solve. Her wealth cannot give her a child. A connection could not give her a child. But when he encount she encountered God, the situation changed for better. I pray for you today that what earthly connection could not give to you, the heavenly connection will provide for you in Jesus' name. We can go on and on like that, but the essence of today is that Every boat in our life shall be rolled away. How am I sure there is a power of God that can cancel every boat? In John chapter 11, verse 39, John 11, verse 39, there was a story there. The, you know, Lazarus was a friend of Jesus. He died and buried. And by the time they buried him, they rolled stone upon his grave. And when Jesus got there, he told them before he could bring Lazarus to comfort, they have to roll away stone. Why? If the stone remained there, even if he asked Lazarus to come forth, he will rise from death, but he won't be able to come out of the grave because stone had been rolled upon the grave. There are so many people that the stone have been rolled upon their destiny. And no matter how they struggle and try, they can't come out of it. That stone shall be rolled away today in Jesus' name. Amen. So there is a power in the almighty God to bring a reproach in your life to a permanent rolling out a permanent solution that no man can provide. 
that power that rolled away the stone at the sepulchre of Lazarus. We roll that reproach away in Jesus' name. The birth of barrenness can be rolled away. In Luke chapter 1, 4 to 14, Luke 1, 4 to 14, we heard the Zachariah was a priest, was faithfully serving God, as we earlier said, but they have no child. But when you come to 57 and 58 of Luke chapter 1, 57 and 58, now Elizabeth, Elizabeth's full time came that she should deliver, and she brought forth a son, and her neighbors, and her cousin had how the Lord has shown great mercy upon her, and they rejoice with her. The Bible, the angel even said to Mary, he said, this is somebody they, they have called Barry. When the birth in her life was rolled away, something happened. The neighbor heard of it, the cousin heard of it, that God has shown our mercy, the Bible says they rejoice with her. Everybody in your life, that when you pass, people begin to point fingers, they begin to whisper to themselves, they will hear how it's rolled away tonight, and they will rejoice with you in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to pray right now and say, Father, Please remove every seed of unfruitfulness in my life and give me glorious children. Remove every seed of unfruitfulness in my life and give me glorious children in Jesus' name. Father, remove every seed of unfruitfulness in my life and give me glorious children in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Father, tonight reward my labor and sacrifice in jesus name reward my labor and sacrifice in jesus name father please reward my labor and sacrifice in jesus name amen elizabeth and Zechariah sacrifice were rewarded yours will be rewarded in jesus name number two what are the board that god will roll away tonight the board of evil conspiracy shall be rolled away. The birth of evil conspiracy shall be rolled away. Amen. Joseph was loved by Jacob more than any of his children, but hated by his sibling and is conspired against him. In Genesis 37 verse 18, when he was sent with an, on an errand to see his brethren, his sibling. Before reaching them at all, they conspired to slay him. They say this, the dreamer, we must kill him. So the life of Joseph had been meeting from one conspiracy to the other. If you look at the life of Jephthah also, in Judges chapter 11, 1 to 3, Judges 11, 1 to 3, he happened to be the firstborn of the family, but the other sibling conspired against him Say you can't rule over us. So he fled the family. He fled from the city because of conspiracy. But the word of God concerning you and I is that any evil conspiracy against us shall scatter. Amen. And that's why we want to pray right now and say, Father, every evil garden designed to bring me down, scatter them tonight in Jesus' name. Father, every evil gathering designed to bring me down, scatter them tonight in Jesus' name. Father, every evil gathering that wanted to bring me down, scatter them right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number two, I want you to pray and say, Father, make me right over my conspirators in Jesus' name. Father, make me right over my conspirator, conspirators in Jesus' name. Help me to ride over my conspirators in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Number three, the birth of rejection shall also roll away tonight. Amen. David was the firstborn in the, I mean, was the last born in the family. Last born means the youngest, who's supposed to be pampered, cherished among the siblings. 
But instead of being pampered and loved, he was rejected. So when God commanded Samuel, according to 1 Samuel 16, 10 to 11, 1 Samuel 16, 10 to 11, to go to the house of Jesse to anoint, appoint a king, he asked Jesse to bring all the children. He brought all the children. The, David was not among them because he was in the bush, in the wilderness, singing to bed, killing lions and bears. And nobody remembered. The father did not remember that still a child left. The sibling did not remember there was a child left until David punished them. I mean, Samuel punished them. When he asked questions, is there any of your children again, because God has not chosen any of these. He said, there remained one uh, young boy in the bush. He said, okay, all of you, including myself, none of us will we, we sit down until you bring that boy. So they were standing, that's at the punishment for them, until David was brought. Why? Because David was suffering from birth of rejection. There was a woman they called Canaanite woman who called, whom Jesus called dog. If God not use her faith to deliver her, she had been totally rejected. Rejected by even Jesus Christ. But later, the Lord saw faith in her and uh, solved her problem. I may not know who you are, but you are hearing what you are hearing today. Because God knew that all your life you have been suffering rejection from every from, uh, right, left, and center. But today, God wants to put a stop to that bond of rejection in your life. So I have an assurance that beginning from now, where you have been rejected, you begin to be celebrated in Jesus' name. So I'm going to pray and say, Father, why we are men have rejected me. Please lift me up in Jesus' name. Where men have rejected me, please lift me up in Jesus' name. Where men have rejected me, please lift me up in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray and say, Father, remember me tonight and send me divine helper in Jesus' name. Father, please remember me tonight and send me divine helper in the name of Jesus. Remember me tonight and send me divine helper in the name of Jesus. Amen. Samuel was divine helper for David. God will send you divine helper in Jesus' name. Amen. Number four, the birth of affliction shall be rolled away tonight in Jesus' name. There are different types of affliction that can bring reproach to man's life. For example, Moses was born as a deliverer to confront the great king Pharaoh, but he was Tamara. In Exodus chapter 4, verse 10, Exodus 4, 10, and Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. God wanted him to go and deliver the people. But he said, I was not eloquent. Why? Because he was a stammerer. Number two, God himself anointed Samuel to be king. I mean, King Saul. Anointed Saul to be king over Israel. But eventually, he was afflicted with evil spirit. If we read First Samuel chapter 16, verse 14, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. The one that had been deciding with wisdom could not even comport himself. Such an air, when they go to, when we get to 1 Samuel 18, 10, 1 Samuel 18, 10, they have to ask David to play for him, and despite that, he wanted to kill the one that was helping him in his moment of trouble. We also see the story of Naaman, who was a great and mighty man, as we have said, honorable, famous, and powerful. But he was afflicted with leprosy. And everything about Naaman was rubbish. 
by the affliction in his life. Money was not anything for Naaman again. And that's why he quickly gave gold and I mean, silver to, to Gaius when he followed after him. Because money is useless when there is no health. Money is useless when there is no health. And remember the story that he told us of somebody who had 14 houses who could not sleep and said daddy should pray for him and then he will give the houses to him. And daddy said, ah, I can't take over your problem. I will pray for you, but keep your house. When there is no hurt or peace, money is useless. You will not be afflicted in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Naaman obeyed the voice of God, deep himself in Jordan. If we are not because of affliction, what will bring Naaman to the presence of Elisha? The two countries were enemy to each other. They don't want to even hear of each other. But when one is looking for heads, there's no level or length he could not go. So there may be someone listening to us right now. You are concerned about just one issue. That is the issue which is the birth of affliction in your life. The doctor might have given up on you Relative might have given up on you, and you might have about to give up on yourself. But the greatest healer, the greatest physician, is here who can perform operation without using any instrument. He will visit you today, and the birth of affliction will leave you alone in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready to pray? Say, Father. Every affliction that I brought reproach into my life, roll them away today in Jesus' name. Father, every affliction that I brought reproach to my life, roll them away today in Jesus' name. Every affliction that I brought reproach to my life, roll them away in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Father, move me from divine healing to divine health in Jesus' name. Father, move me from divine healing to divine health in the name of Jesus. Move me from divine healing to divine health in the name of Jesus. Father, please move me from divine healing to divine health in Jesus' name. Amen. Number five, every boat of failure shall be rolled away. Amen. Anyone that is failing, that is a dark spot in his life. We find sometimes that even when we try our best and we make effort, yet we don't succeed. That we change tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Peter was the first disciple that Jesus, among the first disciples that Jesus called. He was also one of the closest disciples to Jesus Christ. And probably the oldest among the disciples. But he was the one that failed most. In Matthew 17, 14 to 19, Matthew 17, 14, 14 to 19, Peter was the leader of disciples when they failed to cast out evil spirit from that boy. And people rally and now, now gather around them before Jesus came. So he failed. In Matthew, in Matthew chapter 8, 14 to 15, Matthew 8, 14 to 15, Peter was also there when his mother-in-law was afflicted with fever. He could, she, he could not hear the mother-in-law of ordinary fever. So he failed. In Matthew 26, 69 to 20, 74, Matthew 26, 69 to 74, Peter failed again when he, he was cursing himself and said he denied, he did not even know Jesus Christ. So he failed. And when you now read John 21 verse 3, John 21 verse 3, Peter was the first disciple who said, I go a fishing after Jesus uh, was crucified. He did not see him again. He said, I go a fishing. And Jesus had to go and appear to him there. So he failed. Four times he failed. 
But because God is the one that can roll away every boat of failure, he did it in the life of Peter. He will do it in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Peter, who could not heal fever, was the first one to perform miracle. Acts chapter 36 to 8. Acts 36 to 8. Was the one who said, silver and gold have I known, but such as I have I give unto you, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he lifted the lame man up, and the man began to, to leap, to walk, and to jump. So, because he failed before, when that boat was in his life, but by the time it was rolled away, things began to happen geometrically. They were succeed, it was succeeding geometrically. This same Peter, immediately he preached the first sermon. 3,000 people were won for Christ. Acts chapter 2, verse 41. Act 2, 41. And uh, when he moved forward from there to Act 5, 15 to 16, Act 5, 15 to 16, it was stated that they brought forth the sick into the street and lay them on the bed and coaches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow them. He got to a state that ordinary, his ordinary shadow began to perform miracle. I don't know who I'm thinking, talking to. Your shadow will soon be performing miracle in Jesus' name. Maybe you are listening to me tonight and you are wondering whether this boat of failures can be removed in your life. If God can do it in the life of Peter, he can as well do it in your life. Do we, can you join me to pray and say, Father, tonight, separate me from failure permanently in the name of Jesus. Father, tonight, separate me from failure permanently in the name of Jesus. Tonight, separate me from failure permanently in the name of Jesus. Number two, say, Father, Begin to do the impossible through me in the name of Jesus. Father, begin to do the impossible through me in the name of Jesus. From tonight, begin to do the impossible through me in the name of Jesus. Amen. What must I do for the birth in my life to be taken away? Number one, be steadfast and remain faithful regardless of your situation. Be steadfast and remain faithful. Daniel chapter 6, verse 4. Daniel 6. They look at the life of Daniel. They could not find any offense in him. He was stern, steadfast, unmovable, holy, and pure for God. So when they conspire against him, he triumphed. So you too must be steadfast, unmovable, despite your situation. Number two. Obedience to instruction. You must obey the instruction of God. Proverbs 13, 18. Proverbs 13, 18. He said, Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuses instruction. But he that regarded reproof shall be honored. Some children of God are living in disobedience. And that is why the birth in their life remain. If you are living in disobedience, the birth will not go. Remember Jonah that was living in disobedience. Instead of Nineveh, he went to Tarshish. And you know all the story and how he ended until he came back to the level of obedience. Learn how to obey God totally. Half obedience is also disobedience. Number three, fear God and depart from evil. Fear God and depart from evil. Psalm 1, 1 to 3. Psalm 1, 1 to 3. He said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his Lord doth he meditate day and night. It, look at what follow. And it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he dwells shall prosper. There are some children of God. You can't differentiate them from the children of the world. They are the people they work with. They are the people they move with. They are the people that gave them advice. 
that has to change if you want your ball to be rolled away. So in conclusion, we said at the beginning that the origin of every birth or reproach in man's life is the entrance of sin. If you don't deal with the sin in your life, there's no way the reproach can be rolled away. So the, the first thing to do for you to free from every dark spot of your life and to remove all the reproach in your lives is to give your life to Jesus, is to deal with the issue of sin in your life, is to surrender totally to him and reconcile with your maker. So if you know you are not really living right, this is the time for you to make a change and surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ, give your life to him, ask him to forgive your sin, and he will do so. Psalm 33 to 4, where I'm going to read now, three, Psalm 33 to 4. He said, But thou, O Lord, art a shield for my glory and the lifter up of my head. I cry unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. If you cry to him today, he will hear you. Psalm 119, 67, Psalm, Psalm 119, 67, 119, 67, he said, Before I was afflicted, I went astray. You might have gone astray before this reproach came. You might go in on your own way without if recognizing your maker before this reproach come. So if you bow down your head and say, Lord Jesus, I surrender. I want to accept you as Lord and Savior. I will begin to serve you today. I want to pray with you right now. If you have decided to do this, can you please bow down your heads so we pray. Father Almighty, we thank you for your word. We thank you for those you have spoken to their heart to recognize you as their Lord and Savior and to surrender their totality to you. As they have decided to follow you today, please receive them in Jesus' name. Forgive their sin in Jesus' name. Write their name in book of life in Jesus' name and give them power to sin no more in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. For the rest of us, I don't know the kind of dark spot in your life that refuse to go. Tonight, they shall be rolled away in Jesus' name. Can you rise up wherever you are and let us pray this prayer. and Say, Father, by your mighty hand, cancel every bolt in my life in the name of Jesus. By your mighty hand. Cancel every bolt in my life in the name of Jesus. Father, by your mighty hand, cancel every bolt in my life in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Father, let me begin to shine from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Father, from today, let me be, begin to shine from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Let me begin to shine from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to pray right now, and I want you to look unto Jesus, and I want to assure you and have confidence that Daddy our Father the Lord is joining us in prayer for you in this particular program. So if you are sick in the body, lay your hand there. If it's a place you cannot lay your hand, just focus on Christ. Whatever the dark spot in your life, they shall be rolled away tonight in Jesus' name. So Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory, honor, and adoration. When you created us, you sanctify us good. And you say, it's enemy that have done this. Whatever enemy have made wrong in our life, write them in the name of Jesus. Whatever bought or reproach or that spot of our life, the one we cannot handle, the one the other have making jest of us, the one they have been pointing fingers onto us, roll them away in the name of Jesus. You that roll away the stone on the grave of, of, of Lazarus. Every stone the enemy have laid on our destiny that have brought stagnation and reproach. Father, roll them away in Jesus' name. From today, we will shine for you in Jesus' name. Never again shall we ashamed again in Jesus' name. We will go from greater glory to greater glory in Jesus' name. From anointing to anointing in Jesus' name. And every sickness that we are here today, they will never come again in Jesus' name. And together, we shall make heaven in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. 
It's now time for us to give our offering. And I want you to lift your offering up so that we can pray. Our service is not complete if we do not give offering. And please raise it up as we pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, you that have said we should bring all our offering to your house, we are doing so right now. And the promise that follows, let it be a portion in the name of Jesus. None of your children giving to you will ever lack good thing in Jesus' name. You continue to provide for their need in the name of Jesus. Thank you, gracious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord.
At Redeemer's University, Ede, we raise global leaders whose passions are to transform their nations one step at a time. Rated as a powerhouse in genomics of infectious diseases in Africa and a destination for us.